welcome to Film Blade. In this new episode of Film Grasp, we are going to learn chroma keying, a technique to replace the background based on color hues, which is usually a green background. And we'll be doing this inside DaVinci Resolve. Let's get started. We have already imported green screen footage in our timeline. First, drop a background for it. We're going to stack this background under our green screen footage. So when keying this shot, the background layer underneath it will be revealed. Trim the background accordingly. Go to the Effects menu and type 3D Keyer. Drag and drop this onto our green screen footage. We'll find 3D Keyer settings under the Inspector tab, inside the Effects menu. Using these color pickers, we will select the color values we are going to replace, which in this case is green, obviously. Choose the picker and click on the green. But nothing is happening here. The green remains intact. Go down to this bottom left corner of the viewer, click on this button here, this one, and choose Open FX Overlay. Without this step, you won't be seeing any changes. Now, pick the color. Chances are, it won't be just a one-click easy solution. You would have to do some more tweaking. We need to get rid of this green residue here, like there, in her hair. See it? Go to the output and set it to Alpha Highlight Black and White. This will show us the alpha matte of our scene. Here, white is the opaque area and black is transparent. We only want our subjects to be white and the rest to be black. Hence, we'll add more range here to be replaced. Hey, looking better. Under Key Adjustments, let's tweak the Luma low and see what happens. Maybe some highs as well. Let's clip some blacks and whites. Let's check out what it looks like in the final composite. Maybe play with the in-out ratio, fix some edges, punch up the despill to fix the green spill on the edges. Now, as we can see, we have to resize the foreground and also do some grading here. So first, let's go to our color page. We have our main node here. Make a new serial node for grading. Go to Color Wheels. Pull down some Lift. Some Gain too. Maybe some Gamma as well. Compare the changes. Much better. We can see the mat around their hair. It needs some more work. Go back to the edit page. Maybe play with the luma high. This will do. So select the two footage and make a new fusion clip. This will create a new fusion comp here. To the fusion page now. Rearrange the nodes so we can see things clearly. If you hover the cursor on these arrows, you can see which one is the background and which one is the foreground. We can also just click on one of these nodes and press 1, and Fusion will show you that particular node on its first viewer. Let's rename this. Hit F2. We'll call this BG. And rename this one to Couple. If we click here on this single viewer icon, we can have a better look. With the couples node selected, we will bring down the transform node from here. And we're gonna scale them up. Now, when we play this, 
we can see we might have to motion track it as well, for our subjects don't seem to stay still on their position otherwise. So, we'll select our BG node, zoom in to find the right spot to track, hit Shift plus Space to open the Select Tool menu list and type Planner Tracker. Set the tracker to Area and Motion Type to Translation and Rotation. Now mark an area to be tracked. Make sure it has some distinct tracking points in it. Make sure we have set the reference time to our current frame where we have marked the points, which in this case is 44. And from here, we'll track this shot from the current frame to the last frame. Hit it. Now let's go back to frame 44 and track the rest of it backward, from here to start. So we have done the track, pretty decently. Now we need to take this tracking data and put it into the couple node so they can stick to our main footage. So in the planner tracker, we will hit Create Planner Transform. This will create the new node that contains all the tracking data. And we will drag this and place it below the couple but above the transform node. To make our composite look more believable, we can consider adding some depth blur to our background. Hit Shift plus Space, enter Depth Blur, hit Enter. Bring down the focal point and adjust the blur size. Arrange the nodes so it's easier to see. We can also add a glow in here, after the merge node preferably. Adjust the threshold accordingly. You can see how this glow is helping make the rim light on the subject look more legit. Play with the spread as well, fine tune the right combination. Time for some final grades. Well, the shot looks good already. Rename this as the main node. Now we are going to do some adjustments, for which we are going to add a new node. Rename it as LUT. Now, loading in a fresh LUT, right click LUT 16mm LUTs, which is from our 16mm Pro 4K Film Overlays Pack. We have already arranged this pack for the purpose of this tutorial. For this, we are going to choose Serious. Feels too intense, got to tone it down. Go to Key, reduce the output by half. Better. Final optional step. We'll be adding grains from our 16mm overlays pack. Make a new Serial node, then add a Parallel node. For adding grains, head to the Media page. Search for the 16mm Pro Grains from our overlay pack. We're gonna have 16mm Ultra Fine 4K and add them into the media pool as background matte. Now back on our color page, right click on the parallel node, add matte, timeline matte, select our grain matte, which gives us our external matte. We won't be needing this data line, instead, we're gonna pipe up this matte to our parallel node. But as soon as we do this, you will get this grainy texture all over your screen. Just head to our Parallel Mixer and morph it into a Layer Mixer node. Then right-click and choose a Compositing mode, preferably Hard Light in this case. And now we have our grain layer binding our Chroma Key Composite into a single mesh. Take a look, it's adding up to the aesthetic. Well, maybe we can reduce the grain just a touch. With the Parallel node selected, go to Key and change the grain output maybe 0 0.75. That's it. This is how you do chroma keying. If you are serious about leveling up your post-production game, check out our high-end 16mm Pro 4K Film Grain Pack, along with other premium assets, at filmblade.com. We've attached the links in the description. Also, this video is part of our filmmaker series called Film Grasp. 
where we throw light on advanced post-production techniques. Subscribe to level up your filmmaking game and follow us on Instagram at Filmblade to stay updated. That's it for now. Until next time.